Ladies, some people want you to accept less than what you deserve so they can take advantage of you. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. Five ways people try to brainwash women into accepting less than what they deserve. Number one, time is not on your side. As we see all over the internet, Women are being brainwashed into believing that if they don't find a husband straight out of high school, they're somehow doomed. Well, I say for a woman, you are under no one's timetable except for your own and ultimately God's. But you're on your own timetable. As a woman, as a divine, feminine, wise woman, it would behoove you to take your time when it comes to every area of your life including marriage. There is no rush for a woman to get married if she is still trying to figure out who she is and who she wants to be as a woman. What they're trying to do is have women so confused and enamored and caught up with the idea of having a man in their life, while there's nothing wrong with that, if you are straight out the gate, trying to get into a relationship when you are not established as a woman, when you are not grounded in who you are as a woman, you leave yourself open to be brainwashed, manipulated, and ultimately gaslit by a guy. Now, I'm not saying that if you get married young, there's something wrong with that. I got married young. But I will tell you, as much as I love my husband and as much as I am glad that me and him got together, I will tell you, if I had more time, if I had more of a stable home environment, if I wasn't running from something, I might not have gotten married so early. No doubt we would, we would have been together, but I might not have gotten married so early. So I'm telling you this to say that, ladies, there's no rush. You must take your time and understand who you are as a woman and understand what you want for your life or at least have an idea of what you want for your life. Don't allow people to fear monger you into latching on to the first man you meet. There's nothing wrong with having a standard for who you want in your life. And that brings me to number two. They try to tell you that your standards are unrealistic and that you're never going to find someone like this. You're never going to have that kind of career. You can never have this kind of life. It is unattainable. It is unrealistic. As a woman, as once again, a wise, feminine, divine woman, you have to understand that your goals, the things that you might want for your life, the way you want to live, it might be unrealistic to people who are accustomed to being mediocre. If people are accustomed to being mediocre and they're accustomed to struggle, they're not used to someone actually going after what they want or waiting for what they actually want. Anything that you bring up that you want to accomplish that's outside of the realm of their small thinking is going to be unrealistic. You might have the goal of having a healthy, happy marriage with a man who doesn't have any children. You're going to build a family together. And to some people, that might seem unrealistic because in their mind, they'll say, well, you're not going to find a man that doesn't have children. You're not going to find a man that's not this, not that. All men cheat. And I'm just using a man as an example because it's the most common example I can think of. But People think that every man in the world has children. Every single man is going to cheat. And that is not true. So when they try to get you to latch on to the first you know, person that comes your way out of desperation, you as a woman can say things like, he's a nice guy, but he's not the guy for me. He's not in alignment with the top, type of life and type of man that I want in my life. And as far as career, I've always been told that you never quit a job until you have another one. But let's say that you're the woman that wants to start a business. Your goal is not to leave your employment and then to get right back on somebody else's clock. You want to have your own job. You want to create jobs for other people. You want to be an employer. You want to be an entrepreneur. Well, to someone who is accustomed to just clocking in every day, not knocking it, but I'm just saying 
to someone who is accustomed to clocking in, to someone who is accustomed to grabbing at any little thing, not really having a standard for what they want and just accepting whatever's available, your goals, your dreams, the things you want will be unrealistic to them. Look, something as simple as wanting a man, going back to a man, wanting a man to provide and protect you, to actually be the leader in your home. In today's age, that scene is unrealistic. No, you got to be willing to help him. You got to be his partner. You got to do this. You got to be able to pick up the slack. Well, there are men out there that don't need women to pick up their slack. But once again, to people who are accustomed to dealing with mediocre, they think that that is unrealistic. So as a woman, you must understand when somebody is trying to brainwash you into lowering your standards and just rushing ahead into what's available and not what's best for you. So number two, they tell you that your standards are too high. And then number three, which kind of goes along with one and two, they use that, well, nobody's perfect. You're not perfect. Have you ever been in a conversation with a man? and you are trying to get him to be accountable about something, and he doesn't acknowledge whatever it is that you're saying, he just flips it around on you and say, well, you're not perfect. You act like you're perfect. You're not perfect. You do this. You do that. You do this. No accountability. It's that nobody's perfect syndrome. And as true as that may be, as a feminine woman, you don't have to accept someone telling you, well, hey, I didn't do this because I'm not perfect. I didn't say this because I'm not perfect. If you are dealing with a person who has that mentality that they can do mediocre work, that they can have a mediocre way of being with you, that they can tell you one thing and then not come through because, hey, I didn't feel like it. That's that mediocre mentality that, that kind of like, you know, wishy-washy as the older folks used to say back in the day mentality. As a woman, you don't have to accept that. See, when you have a standard for how you live, it's okay for you to have the people in your life be held to that same standard, especially if it's an immediate family member, as in your husband, your children. While we all have different giftings, we all are different people, different personalities, but it's not okay for somebody to tell you they're going to do something. I'll give an example. Let's say your husband, he'll tell you in the morning, when I come home this evening, we're going out to a restaurant. I'm taking you to this best restaurant where your prettiest dress, you know, get ready and I'm taking you here. Well, a man who is a man of his word, unless something happens, I'm not saying, you know, he comes home and he's sick or, you know, he's hurt or there's a family emergency. But if he just comes home as a woman, he walks through the door perfectly fine and he says, you know what? I don't feel like going out tonight. We're not going. But wait a minute. You told me this morning that we were going out to dinner and I bought a new dress. I got my hair done. That's not right. And most men who are men of their word, they won't do that. Or at least they'll give you some kind of notice ahead of time. Maybe call you on a lunch break or something and let you know. It's just that accountability, that, that letting you know. It's very tacky for a person. And I use that as an example. But it's very tacky for a person to not be a person of their word or to be all over the place, especially as a man. So when a man likes to tell you, well, nobody's perfect. I'm like this. I'm like that. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but bear with me. I saw a TikTok just this morning and the guy invited the young lady out to dinner and they went on the date, and when it was time to pay the bill, he held up the receipt to her and said, well, you ate $20 worth of food, so you got to put $20 on this bill. As a man, he invited her out on a date. And ladies, that's a huge red flag. If a man invites you out on a date and then expects you to pay or pay half of it, that is not the type of man you want in your life. Because when you're dating, that's the you impress me phase while you're impressing him, but you're doing it in a different way. When men are trying to impress you, the last thing, especially masculine men, they don't want to appear broke in your presence, even if they are. They're going to get a bunch of ones and make it look like they got a whole bunch of money if they don't. But this man, he was like telling her, you know, well, you had this, you had that. I would have gave him that 20 and got up and walked away and he would have never saw me again. And I'm hoping that's what she did. But I say this to say, again, 
that standard, that nobody's perfect. If the man knew he couldn't afford to take her out on a date, he never should have invited her. Number one, that, that I think she would appreciate it more if he invited it, invited it, it <laughs> invited her to something that was within his price range. Maybe they could have went for a nice walk in the park if she would accept that. I wouldn't accept that as a first date. But I digress. That nobody's perfect syndrome. Ladies, don't buy that. They use that to try to gaslight you into lowering your standard. Number three. Number four, weaponized incompetence. People like to use incompetence to keep women on the front lines of their battles. When people act like they're too dumb to process what to do, how to be, they know that women, because we have that nurturing spirit, because we have that wanting to care for kind of spirit, and especially if you are a reformed masculine woman, they know for a fact that you will hop in and help out wherever's needed and they can keep acting dumb essentially in order to take advantage of your kind but also a little naive nature when it comes to somebody trying to gaslight you into doing the things that they should be doing for themselves. So number four, they use weaponized incompetence to keep women masculine and keep them out of their rested feminine posture. And then lastly, number five way that people want women or brainwash women into accepting less than what they deserve is by telling you you're going to miss out, that FOMO, that fear of missing out. Once again, people try to rush you according to their timetable and not allow you to really be at ease and process and think about who, what, and where you want to be in life. Don't let anyone make you feel like because you're 18, because you're 21, because you're 30, you should have your entire life figured out and this is what you should be doing and this is how it should be going. As a divine feminine woman, you should be taking your instructions from God, number one, and then you get insight and wisdom from whoever else he may place in your path. But under no circumstances should you allow people to rush you into being or doing something that you are not comfortable doing or you don't want to do. If you're not ready for marriage, if you're not ready for whatever, if you are ready for marriage, if you don't want to work for somebody, you want to work for yourself. You put plans in place and move in a way where you will be a great wife. Start doing wife-like things, developing wife-like character. Start developing the character of an entrepreneur, of a businesswoman. Start developing the character of a mother, of a nurturer, of a woman who really has the kind of life that you would like to have. But don't let people pressure you or make you feel bad because you are not where they say that you should be in the present moment. All right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, I absolutely appreciate you. Put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I love to see it. Take care.